Hi, welcome to Yoga Any Day. My name is Elizabeth Stewart, and today we're going to have a yoga practice in alignment with the astrological energies of the full moon on October 31st. We'll begin by taking a look at the chart for this full moon, and I'll lead you through three standing yoga poses that reflect three of the important planetary aspects happening at this time. Then we'll get into some vinyasa, linking the energies together through yoga flows. And at the very end, we'll have an improv jam. I'll put on music and we'll have time for some free movement. So let's get started with a look at the chart. Here we have the sun in Scorpio opposing the moon in Taurus. Venus rules this full moon because she rules Taurus. As you can see here, Venus is in Libra, which is the other sign that she rules. And because this moon cycle began with the October 16th new moon, which was in Libra, this is the second time Venus is going to be ruling our yoga astrology practice. So we'll begin with her. She's in close opposition here with Chiron and Aries, which has to do with loving our wounds. We're welcomed to heal our insecurities through self-acceptance and self-esteem. When we listen to ourselves with care and tend to painful feelings, we're transformed by accepting those experiences as gifts. No mud, no lotus. So for a yoga pose to encompass this energy, we are really gonna feel into ourselves. Beginning by standing up and making some nice big circles on the hips with the palms of the hands. Breathing easily, just warming up and relaxing. And we'll move the hands up to the chest nice big circles here connecting with yourself easy breath and then up to your head big circles using the palms of the hands smoothing out any tension just relaxing And we'll wrap our arms around ourselves at the waist and rock, twisting gently from side to side. You can start a little slowly. Use your breath to release tension. And then you can let yourself start to swing a little bit. Finding some momentum, try to make it feel easy. Keep using your exhales to release tension. And slowing it down. And coming back to center. And we're gonna come into Eagle Pose. I'm gonna get there step by step. So whatever stage feels right for you, feel free to hang out there. And if you ever feel too tippy, you can just hold on to something. So first, I'll just bring my feet together and bend my knees. I'm gonna keep hugging my waist for now and try to lean my butt back a bit so my weight comes towards the heels of my feet. And I'm gonna lift my chest up, arching and squeezing my back and opening my chest wide. I'm going to lift one foot and cross my thigh over my other thigh, pressing my legs together, still keeping my weight back toward my heels. And if you want, you can add the arms. So bring them out in front of you. One crosses over the other. The elbows bend and interlace. The forearms entwine and the palms and fingers come together, pointing straight up. Try reaching your shoulders down if you're doing this and reaching your hands up. There's a lot of touching yourself here, so just see if you can feel the comfort of that touch. If you want, you can sway a little bit, that might be nice. Or just hold steady, letting your breath flow.
When you're ready to come out of it, you can either just stand up or you can come out of it like an eagle taking flight. So you just release your arms and your top leg completely open to the sides all in one big reach and then come back to standing. Take a moment to just pause. Feel your breath. Maybe you can feel your heartbeat. And we'll try the other side. So bending your knees again. You can start with the arms wrapped around your waist again if you liked that. Bringing your weight back into your heels. Opening up in your chest, arching through your back and spreading the shoulders wide. And we'll lift one leg up, the opposite leg, and try crossing one thigh over the other, bringing the knees one on top of the other. Gently squeezing the legs together. Keep letting your breath really open you up gently from inside, so staying soft inside. And if you want to extend the arms, go ahead and cross the opposite arm over, bending the elbows, entwining the forearms, and bringing the palms together with the fingers pointing up. You can reach your shoulders down as you stretch your hands up towards the sky. Feel all of these points of contact where you're touching yourself, embracing yourself. And when you're ready to come out of it, you can just stand back up or you can spring to flight like an eagle both arms and the top leg shooting out to the sides all at once and gently bringing them back down. So coming back to the chart, the next aspect we'll investigate is Mars retrograde in Aries, squaring Jupiter and Pluto in Capricorn, and Mercury retrograde in Libra, also squaring Jupiter and Pluto as well as Saturn in Capricorn. Aries, Libra, and Capricorn are all cardinal signs, so something is being initiated here. With both Mercury and Mars retrograde, we're reminded to be careful with fighting or hurtful words. These squares are tense and can feel like frustration or impatience, so let's work with this sense of holding steady as we encounter tension. I feel that we can initiate ourselves as peaceful warriors. Mars in Aries is our determination, and Mercury in fair-minded Libra is our wisdom. We're going to come into Warrior Two, So you can bring one foot pointing straight forward, the other foot angled forward. The front knee bends and holds steady over the front ankle, and the back leg squeezes long and strong. The pelvis opens. Squeeze your butt a bit to keep the pelvis engaged and your spine can be very long, rising straight up, supported by a strong stomach and open chest. And we'll bring both arms out, shoulders down away from your ears, fingers together with the palms facing down. And we can look out over our front hand. So there's tension here and also poise. A peaceful warrior is centered, patient, and grounded. Let's place our Mars energy in our front hand, our aim, our will, our determination to move forward, and we'll place our Mercury energy, our thoughtful wisdom, in our back hand. Feel the balance here. Breathe steadily.
Take a nice long breath in and we'll let the front knee bat, uh, straighten and both arms come down. And we'll swivel the feet around so we've got the other foot pointing straight forward and now the back foot is angled a bit forward and we'll bend that front knee right over the ankle. Try to keep it right on top of the ankle. Engage through your pelvis, opening your hips, reaching up long with your spine. Use your stomach for support and really nice big open chest. And we'll let the arms float up, coming straight out from the shoulders. Try to keep reaching the shoulders down. Palms facing down, all the fingers lined up, and we can look out over the front hand. Breathe steadily. A lot of times in Warrior Two, people tend to lean more of their weight forward towards your bent leg and towards your front hand. So that kind of reminds me of the impatience of Mars wanting to get into the fight and just move into it, right? But we're balanced here by the other side. That's our Mercury, right? That's us thinking things through. And in Libra, there's a bit of distance in our perspective. So we're not rushing into anything, right? We're holding ourselves steady so that we can be centered. And we'll slowly straighten that front leg again and let both arms come down to your sides and come on out of it. Okay, so we'll go back to the chart for our final aspect, which is the full moon in Taurus, pretty much exactly conjunct Uranus. The full moon is at almost nine degrees of Taurus, so you can check your natal chart to see which house nine degrees of Taurus falls in for you to see where this energy might be showing up for you personally. The full moon is a time of heightened emotion and in Taurus it's very grounded and sensory. The full moon conjunct Uranus is a real lightning bolt. Uranus shakes things up so we can expect eruptions of energy from our deep foundation like an earthquake or a breaking through of whatever emotions you have beneath your surface. If you've been repressing anything, you may want to open up to letting it come through to the surface, or you may find it's brought to the surface for you. For a pose to embody this energy, we're going to work with tree pose. Tree pose might seem like a very passive pose to represent this very dynamic energy, but Uranus has to do with uniqueness. And I've always loved how we can embrace the uniqueness of a tree without judgment. Whereas when dealing with ourselves, we're often embarrassed to be who we uniquely are. So whatever you've got below the surface, and you may not know what that is if it's in your subconscious, we're going to allow it to come up through our tree pose. If you need support in this pose because it is a balancing pose, please just reach out and get support. A wall, a chair, a table, whatever. There's support all around you and all you have to do is reach out for it. So standing tall, we'll start just with some awareness of the breath. I want you to try to not direct the breath. We're going to lose control a little bit here. See if you can allow the breath to just come into you and go wherever it wants. There's vulnerability in tree pose a receptivity and sensitivity, which is gonna help us get in touch with whatever we've got below our surface. We don't choose how we feel, just how we handle our feelings. So opening inside ourselves to accept whatever feelings arise is a loving and peaceful way to move with this Uranian full moon energy, which can be pretty intense. Bringing one foot along the inside of your standing leg, you can keep the foot down along your ankle or up along your leg anywhere you want, all the way up 
to the inner thigh, or you can bring the foot into half lotus if that's comfortable for you. We're gonna bring one hand in front of your chest or both hands, the palms can come together if your balance is steady. I want you to really soften here, opening up inside. How big can the space inside of you be? And from this sense of opening, we're gonna extend one arm or both arms up. Whatever shape your arms want to take is great. They don't have to be symmetrical. This is Uranus, so it's about uniqueness. Maybe for you right now, your hands feel like little joyful cherry blossoms, or maybe they feel heavy and gnarled like oak tree branches or sad like a willow tree, or frozen with fear. Every tree is unique, just like you are unique. Let's try to allow our yoga to express our experience. Let ourself come through. want you to come on out of it however you want. Back to standing. Just taking a moment of doing nothing, kind of allowing yourself to reset. And when you're ready, we'll start on the other side, bringing one foot along the other leg. It can be all the way down at your other ankle, that's fine or anywhere up along the leg that feels good for you is good for you. Or all the way up, folded into the crease of your hip. Generally pressing the foot into the leg and the leg back into the foot is a good way to maintain balance. Allowing yourself to soften inside Sometimes when we're balancing, we feel kind of rigid, like we want to hold on to the experience of balance, but balance really requires, requires flexibility and softness, so let's try to tap into that here. Allow the breath to come into you. Try not to direct it. And we're gonna bring the arms up. It could be one arm, it could be both arms. They can come up through your center, palms together, or one palm in front of your chest. Feel the hands activating your heart and that heart energy growing a bit bigger. And when you're ready, you're gonna grow up with your arms into branches. This side doesn't have to match the other side. Let it be spontaneous, right? Let it just come out. Whatever shape you make is fine. When you're ready to come out of it, I want you to come out however you feel like doing it. And back to standing. And we can actually come down so we're sitting. We'll just chat for a minute and then we'll get into our vinyasas. Okay, 
I love imagining all of your unique tree shapes. Um, we're going to get into some vinyasa now and we'll use poses that incorporate these three different aspects and flow between them. Just keep in mind that your pace can be your own, right? Find your own rhythm of your breath, find your own rhythm of the movement, and in that way you can really sink into your own energies and make this flow your own. So we'll begin by bringing both knees into the chest, hugging them gently with your arms. If you feel like rocking a little bit side to side, you can. This can be a nice little massage for the lower back. Breathe gently into your belly. And just release tension as you exhale. This is our Venus and Chiron energy. Allow space for your insecurities. Embrace yourself with self-acceptance and love. And you can reach the shoulders down away from the ears. A lot of time fear collects in the neck and shoulders. So just give yourself a little more space in there. Next, we're gonna cross the legs over each other, crossing at the knees and holding your feet with your hands. Here's our Mars and Mercury, our peaceful warrior. You can give a little bit of pressure into your hands with your feet and use the exhales to release tension. Nice and steady. And then we'll let go with the hands, open the legs wide out to the sides. You can use your hands here to support your legs if you want to or just rest your hands wherever you want. Reach open wide, stretching out through your legs, allowing yourself to express your feelings, allowing your energy to move out. And we'll bend the knees back in, hug them with the arms again. Again, if you feel like rocking a little bit, you can breathe soft breaths into your belly and then we'll cross the legs over the other way. Holding the feet with your hands, giving a little pressure into your hands with your feet. And then releasing the feet with your hands and allowing the legs to open all the way out to the side, stretching out, squeezing and reaching long. and then bringing the legs back in and hugging them with the arms again. We're going to keep going through these poses as a flow. Whatever pace feels right for you is good for you. If you want to coordinate your breath with your movement, go ahead. If not, just breathe. If this is a bit tricky for you, especially the part where you open the legs out to the sides if it feels really tense, you can either bend your knees a little bit or you can put a roller or a bolster or pillows or whatever under your hips to elevate your hips a little bit. It'll make it a lot easier. Try to really feel this progression. So there's the sensitivity of just hugging yourself. There's the crossing of the energies, some tension with your hands and your feet. And then there's a real opening up and self-expression as you reach the legs out to the sides.
When you've reached the end of your next cycle, let's allow the feet to come together with the soles touching, resting on the ground with your knees just falling open. You can put your hands on your legs, on your belly. You can rest them open to the sides, whatever feels good. And just allowing a little space of doing nothing. Next, we're going to come all the way around onto your hands and knees. And we're going to come into our next flow, starting with rabbit pose. So you're going to sit your butt back onto your heels. You're going to hold your heels with your hands. Lift your back up so you're rounding your back. And let your head come. It can be on the ground if it needs to be, or if you can bring it off of the ground, you want to curl it in towards your knees. So there's some pressure between the hands and the heels, like you're almost like you're pulling on the heels a little bit, and allow that pulling feeling to help you really round your back up towards the ceiling. Use your lower belly to push into your lower back to help support it and open it up. Let your breath be smooth, connecting in with yourself. And then you're going to let go of your heels with your hands. Roll up through your torso so you're sort of sitting up on top of your knees. And we're going to stretch one leg all the way out to the side straight and come into gate pose. So you're going to have one hand on your straight leg and the other arm reaching up towards the ceiling and then arching gently over towards your straight leg. You can look down at the ground if you want. You can look straight forward or you can look all the way up towards the ceiling. Squeeze and reach long. Feel that good long stretch all through your side. Use that straight leg to ground yourself and support your torso. And from here, we're going to leave the legs where they are. We're going to open the arms both out to the sides and bring your chest back over your pelvis. Turn your palms so they're facing up. Reach up with your chest and look up, reaching up long through your chin. Allow the energy to really rise up here. Offering it up, allowing it to come through. And we're going to bring the head back down, let the arms float down. Bend that straight leg back in and we'll come all the way back down into rabbit, sitting your butt back onto your heels, lowering your head, holding the heels with the hands, and then stretching the back up towards the ceiling, lifting up through your hips and curling your head in towards your knees. Breathe smooth, connecting with yourself. And then releasing the hands away from the heels, rolling up through your spine, coming so you're sitting up on top of the knees. And we'll open the other leg out to the side, keeping it nice and straight. Bring one hand onto your straight leg. The other arm goes all the way up towards the ceiling. And then arches over towards your straight leg. Long, long stretch all through your side. Allow the strength of that straight leg to support you so you don't feel like you're collapsing, but you're opening up. Again, look wherever feels most comfortable for you.
and we'll come back up to the center with the torso, opening the arms out to the sides with the palms facing up. Lift up really tall through your chest, opening up to the ceiling and reaching up long through your chin. Send the energy high up above you, allowing it to come through. And we'll bring the head back down, let the arms float back down, bend that straight leg back in, and come all the way back down into our rabbit. And we'll keep flowing between these poses. Allow your breath to guide you and allow the pace of movement to just feel whatever your natural rhythm feels like, right? You can go fast, you can go slow, you can change it up. There are no rules here. You get to express yourself. When you get to the end of the cycle, we're gonna come down and rest in child's pose. Allowing space for nothingness is really important so that we're not imposing anything, but we're also undoing whatever we already have imposed. We're trying to come into balance. So there's doing and there's undoing. And we'll gently roll back up. Allow your head to hang down until the very end and then it just floats up on top and we'll come around so we're sitting with the legs in front of us knees bent feet flat we're going to wrap our arms around our knees and rest our heads really softening here allow your neck to release and lengthen feel the shoulders falling away from the spine be very soft in your belly. Feel the movement of your belly against your legs. And we'll gently start to roll open through the spine. Move your hands around behind your thighs Lean back a bit with your chest, trying to keep your spine really straight and strong and lift the feet off of the ground. You can hang out here or you can try straightening the legs. If you're gonna straighten the legs, think of the feet as coming up towards the ceiling instead of kicking out away from you so that you can maintain a lot of strength, strength and straightness in your lower back. If you wanna let go of the legs, feel free to just reach forward with your arms, keeping the shoulders back and down. And 
and we're going to bend the knees, bringing the feet back down to the ground. And we're going to roll a bit onto one side, keeping the knees bent. I want you to arch up through your rib cage, lift your arm up towards the ceiling and arc it over your head. So we've got one arm straight on the ground supporting us. Really reach up through your rib cage towards the ceiling and you can look up towards the ceiling if you want, or you can even look all the way around towards the palm of your top arm. If you want to lift the hips up, go for it. Stretching up high, supporting yourself from below. And we'll bring that top arm back down, come back so you're facing forward, knees bent, feet flat on the ground, wrap the arms around the legs and allow your head to rest. Really getting in touch with the breath here. Maybe you can feel the breath in the back of your neck or feel the breath in the shoulders. And we'll move the hands around to the backs of the thighs, stretching long through your spine, leaning back, and bringing the feet up off of the floor. If you want, you can straighten the legs, reaching the feet up towards the ceiling. And if you want, you can let go of the legs with the hands. Strong, steady breath. And we'll bend the knees again, bringing the feet back down to the ground and rolling onto our other side. Lifting one arm up towards the ceiling and let it arc over your head. Use that straight hand that's on the ground to press down so that arm is helping you to lift up through your rib cage. Get a nice big stretch up through your whole side. You can try looking up towards the ceiling or all the way back over towards the palm of your top hand. and letting that top arm come back down and we'll roll back to center. Hugging the legs again, resting your head and we'll go ahead and flow through these poses. remembering which energies we're working with at each one of these poses. We've got our Venus and Chiron connecting with self-acceptance, healing our insecurities. We've got our boat pose for our Mars and our Mercury and our Capricorn planets. Strong and balanced. And we've got our funky self-expression in our full moon conjunct Uranus. It's not a yoga pose I've ever heard of or seen before. I just made it up, right? It's very Uranus.
when you've reached the end of your cycle, we're going to come all the way up to standing and bend over for a standing forward bend. Take your time. And you can have the knees bent if you want or straight. Either way is great. If your hands reach the ground, awesome. If not, awesome. You can hold on to your legs. It really doesn't matter how far you go into any particular pose, right? We're not here for points. It's just for you. So wherever you're at is wherever you're at. Folding into yourself here for our forward bend. You can try reaching your forehead in towards your legs, connecting with yourself. And we're going to bring this into warrior three. So if your standing leg needs to be bent, that's fine. If you can straighten it, go ahead and straighten it. I want you to open up long with your chest and stretch the standing one of your legs, sorry, out behind you. You can be roughly parallel to the ground with your leg and your torso. The arms, if you need to hold on to something, hold on to something, that's totally fine. If you can, try bringing the arms back by your sides. So we have this feeling of the head shooting forward and the arms and the back leg holding it steady back. And I want to come from here into half moon. So if you have one hand um, that can reach the ground, go ahead and do that. It's going to be the same hand that is on the side that you're standing on, right? The back leg is going to stay up and rotate open towards the ceiling, and the top arm is going to reach all the way up. If you can't reach the ground, hold on to a chair, wall, piece of furniture, whatever. This is a really joyous, like, opening up and self-expression. So just feel the softness of the top of your body. Even though there's tension, it's a hard pose, try to feel that big opening up. And when you're ready, we're going to bring the top arm and leg all the way back down and come back into our standing forward bend. Try to let your neck be long so your head is coming down towards the ground and you can reach it in towards your legs as well. Connecting with yourself gently. And we'll come into warrior three on the other side, reaching one leg back, reaching long through the top of your head forward, bringing the arms along your sides if you can or holding on to something, feeling that long, strong opposition Breathing steadily. And then we'll roll open through the top hip and reach one arm straight up. The other hand can come down to the ground or hold wherever you need. Uranus also has to do with liberation, so if there, you can get a little bit of the feeling of liberating yourself here, that would be great. And we'll bring that top arm and leg all the way back down for our standing forward bend. And we'll keep moving through these poses.
when you've reached the end of your cycle, you can gently come down all the way to sitting, whatever sitting position feels most comfortable for you. And we'll just take our last pause here. You can close the eyes if you want. Just experiencing whatever you're feeling. And you can gently let your eyes open. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I do intend to keep making these yoga astrology videos, so please subscribe to the channel if you're interested in that. And I'm teaching private classes one-on-one -on -one, live online and making personalized videos. So if you have interest in that, you can send me an email at yogaanyday at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Take care.